And I took this picture 23 years ago of um, Bradford City um, and a, a club which has been in the news a lot recently along with, um, well, for, for the Bradford City fire and, and, of course, the Hillsborough disaster too is still rumbling on, you know, huge inquiry into that. And um, I took it to sort of suggest a path ahead, you know, a brighter future for football, not just for Bradford City, as if it could be, you know, lead to a better place, sort of yellow brick road. That span of years has been incredibly momentous. I mean, in that time, the Premier League has come along. Its whole time has been since those two disasters. And I just wanted to kind of ask, actually, whether I uh, ask the audience here, whether you think the game is, in, in general, old or new. Really, yeah, the game is about 150 years old, the organized game. And so, if it's going to last for another 150 years, or longer, maybe a thousand years, or forever, then really it's, it's young. We're, we are the pioneers, us lot here. And so, the original grounds, this is Doncaster Rovers, I took in 1990. They were bottom of the entire football league, and uh, they were sort of ridiculed, but that kind of crack that you see is just in our time. We've got, we're fortunate enough to be having a glimpse of a great pioneering age. This is the sort of three pillars of society in my eyes. We've got the factory, religion, and of course football. <laughs> um, and I can never understand why people would want to go and do anything else when a football match is being played just down the road. Why they should want to go shopping or go to Westgate or something, I just do not understand when you've got something so beautiful. This was just a few weeks ago. Um, it's Belper Town, who are bottom, playing a team, riding their luck, FC United, in red. I'm often asked who I support, and I think people are also trying to work out what level of the game I support. Like, is he a sort of premiership man, or is he a grassroots man, or is somewhere in the middle? The truth is, I actually adore the game at every single level. I, I also think that one of the discussion points about the premiership and the sort of the top of the game is that, you know, if they're the tall trees, the premiership of particularly England, um, do they have to be felled for others to come through? You know, I don't really want them to be felled at all, actually. Um, I just hope that some new flags emerge anyway. Um, this was Rangers supporters. This was back in the good days. Um, a premiership team in Scotland used to champion, uh, Champions League football. And when their tall tree was felled with all the financial troubles that they've had, demotion to the fourth tier, almost kicked out of football entirely, a lot of the supporters that were traditional Rangers fans that were used to going to big clubs, were then forced to think, well, do I support them by going to Stenhouse Muir and all these teams that might have been considered beneath them? So, in a way, what perhaps happened was that some of the loyal fans said, yeah, I'll do that, I'll, I'm a supporter. But it kind of gave the chance for some new supporters to come through, some new Rangers supporters who would like going to Stenhouse Muir and Queen of the South and lots of smaller clubs. I purposely chose an, an Aeon Manchester United shirt, slightly disheveled, covered in paint. For those that fall out of love with a top game, they certainly, um, if they're priced out of the market, I think there's a chance for them to find their football elsewhere. At the level below the very top, <coughs> and somewhere between the bottom and the top, uh, thousands of grassroots um, football clubs, which traditionally it's an incredible amount of clubs that we have in this country. But if you were to read the non-league football weekly, which lists all these wonderful tables, unfortunately you see alongside, this season particularly, quite a lot of clubs having their records expunged. You know, they haven't made it through the season. So whilst I mentioned about Rangers, they have actually survived, albeit at a lower level, trying to work back up. But lower down, um, many clubs have been casualties. This is a, a secretary of 
Borough Bridge, trying to, I think he's just being told that only four players are turning up and he's got two hours before kick-off. That sort of thing, or the milk's gone off and he can't afford another. I kind of don't want to analyse it too much, but I think part of the reason why we're losing some of our traditional teams around the country is that they were plumbers and joiners and carpenters that, you know, help the club. In other words, if they needed a, a, a grandstand building, they themselves would do it. And lots of the village teams, including my favourite, where I lived right next to the pitch, Oldswater in the Lake District, lots of the players now spill out from the sat towns, you know, the bigger towns, into the little villages. And the, the village teams hardly have anybody left to actually, um, who are from that place. And therefore, you know, is there the same loyalty? Some players would just think, oh, I can't make it today. And, and therefore, some of those jobs and some of that sort of community stuff would just not get done. Perhaps one of the great you know, pluses in the demise of the male-dominated village team is the women's game. They uh, are not so dependent on where they play. You know, they haven't got the tradition to live up to. So, in a way, they're sort of world's their oyster. And, the women's game's going like that, whilst the male game is trying to redefine itself. There's always a chance for redefinition, rebooting the game. This club, Lewis, on the south coast, has a lot of fun, really. Up here is some beach huts replacing executive boxes. Um, being near the sea, they thought, well, let's have something a, you know, a bit like that that evokes where we're from. These are their uh, filmic match posters. So there's quite a few creatives living on the edge of Brighton. I think we're pretty sure of that. From the now, of the social media, you know, I've been doing this photographic thing, tweeting. I love tweeting because you get an immediate reaction, I mean, as we're going to get with the Q&A. You put out a tweet, and within a few seconds, even some seemingly before you've sent it sometimes, somebody seems to be on, the, on your case, hopefully in a positive way. Um, and fans tweet, brands tweet. Brands now try and steer us you know, in their direction, which is fine. TV is a huge tweet, in a way. It's live TV, huge coverage. There's a great temptation for the streaker or someone to run on the pitch or a lad to throw his toilet roll and then see his toilet roll cascade onto the pitch in front of millions of people, you know, whilst lots of brands are paying thousands and thousands of millions of pounds to have their name put up. So you can kind of make your mark. In a way, with what I do, I always thought the essence of our game and how I would, re I would create the homes of football to say this is what the game is like was above all about loyalty, humour, um, a sense of place, you know, where you're from or your club is from, a sort of compassion, an all-embracing game. So that's very much what I wanted the image to be like. And just recently, um, Puma, with Arsenal, uh, commissioned me to, they said, we want an executive box that isn't all stuffy, we want a really great one, a Puma executive box that isn't prawn sandwiches. So we want your pictures, Stuart, of real fans. And I kind of thought, hmm, do you really, you know? But they went through with it, they commissioned me, paid me, and they loved the pictures and put them up. But, but for the action one, which isn't so much what I do, all the others, which you can just about make out, are these sorts of pictures. <laughs> um, and, a, you know, it's a really wonderful executive box, a very classic, in a way, conservative club, Arsenal. So, Lewis, who play at the dripping pan, and I like to think that there's this idea, the Premier League have said everything would drip down, the wealth would drip down, but actually, culturally, it can go the other way. I'm not saying that they all rush down to sit in the executive boxes, those beach hunts at Lewis, to come up with this idea, but some of the, thi some of the things that magazines, FC United, Lewis, clubs do at a much lower level can impress all sorts of people, including Arsenal, whereby 
you know, it's fantastic that they have such a, such a thing in their ground. I don't think they ever could have imagined they would have such an executive box. So everything's to play for. <laughs>